Archons. Today we're going to give you a day one tour of the Keyforge web app from Fantasy Flight Games. We'll be looking at the browser based version that you can view on your PC or your laptop or even your phone. Viewing the main page you have a login option in the top right. You have an organized play menu, a search decks button and a my decks button. In the top left it tells you that this is the beta version. If you want to know more about the game and you click on learn more it will take you to the FFG website and the main product page for it where you can see all the details. If you scroll down a little bit there is an option to give feedback and if you click here it will open up your mail client. And if you scroll along to the right then there is an option to download the rules. If you click on that it will take you to the PDF of the full rules or you can right click and uh, save it for later. Below that is the Manage My Keyforge, where it prompts you to log in, which we'll be doing a little bit later. But if you click on Search Decks, you can see that people have been busy. If you know the deck name, you can input it here, or you can scroll through all of the thousands of decks which have been entered. Now, at the moment, you can only search by name. You can't search by any of the other things because organized play isn't active and people haven't started ranking their decks yet. And you can get an inclination that all of these are from around the world. Let's find one and click at random and it brings you up obviously all the stats about their deck. You can see the three houses that comprise it plus all of the cards from each house. And you've got the rarity symbols down the left, then the card numbers, then the card names. And if you hover over the card names, it will bring a little pop up with a full visual display of that actual card. Going up a bit, this is where the organized play information will appear. You can see the wins, the losses and the total matches played, which will define the power of that deck and thus how many chains are needed to handicap it for tournament play. And you can even share this deck by clicking here, Facebook or Twitter. Click in the top left to go back to the main menu, scroll down. There are no active events at the moment, but if you click on here, it opens up a new window for organized play, which is the same as clicking the organized play link at the top. There is a bare bones overview of what organized play is. A prompt that the store locator will be coming soon and the name of the first organized play season. Plus there's a little reminder on the two formats of Keyforge. Archon is where you bring your own deck and Sealed is where you buy a deck at the event or even multiple decks. The first type of event will be store events but as you can see there are three more in the works ready to be announced soon. If you click on those it takes you back to the top of the page. And at the bottom of the page is where they will be announcing the prizes which are to be found in the organized play kits. So check back here soon, however long soon is. At the base of each page you have Facebook, Instagram and Twitter links and these are for the generic FFG pages, not dedicated specific Keyforge ones. There are four links below this. The first takes you back to the main FFG Keyforge product page. The next opens the main edition of the rulebook which you can right click to download if you like. Then it's the FFG privacy policy and also their terms of use. Plus there's a handy link for the FFG homepage. If you go back to the main page and then scroll down to the bottom of this page, there is a handy little menu where you can change the language into one of five languages, like so. And as well as the website language changing, the names of the cards are also localized to that language as well. Plus all the handy pop-ups, which is great. So that was pretty much everything you can see without logging in or signing up. If you click on the login button on the top right, it will bring up a sign in box here. And if you've ever had a store or a forum account with any one of these companies, you should be good to go. So type in your username and password or click create account if you haven't done so already. And after you sign in, you'll notice that your username and any icon that you've registered appears up here in the top right instead of the login button. And if you click on your username, then that brings you up to your personal page here. Click on go to my decks. As you can see, we've got no decks registered so far. If we did, we can search them using these tools here. And if you click on go to my asmodee.net account, this is the same account they use for all of their app based games. And you can also use it to change any personal details. And if you scroll down a bit to the treasure section, you can see how many amber shards you've earned. Three amber shards make one amber. And as we all know, you need six amber to forge a key. And as a handy little reminder, that we will need 18 shards to forge our next key. The primary way of doing this is by registering decks. At the bottom you can see your overall total of amber shards and keys forged. Let's go back to my decks and have a go at registering a deck. Just above your QR code is a 16 digit code. And if you are accessing the site through your browser, then just type it into this box here. And it automatically puts the hyphens in for you. 
Once you're done, click on Add Deck. The first time you register a deck to your account, you'll get this lovely pop-up here. You can go to the deck profile, which will bring up the full details. You've got the deck listing, you've got the organised play, and you've got the option to share your deck as well. Plus, you can add notes at the bottom, and these will be saved and viewable only by you. You can edit these notes as well, so if you want to keep track of the games played or of the deck's performance, this is really handy, because you can keep coming back and editing these notes as often as you like. And there's always the option to delete it as well. Something that is pretty neat is that these three cards in the top here are the same as the first three cards in each of your houses, and you can click on them to spin them round. You can add this deck to your favourites as well, which makes it easier to sort, or you can remove this deck from your account. The deck stays in the Keyforge database so other people can see it, and you can always re-add it at any time. It might take a little while to refresh however, so if it does this, just click on your username in the top right, and then come back to this page, and Bob's your uncle. If you click on the only show favourites, it will only show your favourites. Thus, if you've registered a lot of decks, but want an easy way of viewing a selected few, use this heart. If you are logged in and you click on the organised play section, there is still nothing to view at this time as the seasons haven't officially launched yet. You can go to the search decks page and watch the number of decks registered climb minute by minute. So let's see what happens on someone else's account. Here we are signed in to one of our friends accounts and we're going to try and register Adam and Care on this account as well. Let's see what happens. Click on add deck and voila, we get the nice pop up that we've registered Adam and Care, She Who Murders the Bluff, to this second account. If we go to the deck profile, everything looks the same, except there are no notes registered down the bottom. We can see all of the stats for this deck, which are currently zero. And let's flip back to our own account, just to make sure that it's still there listed. It is, so you can have decks registered with multiple accounts. Why might you want to do this? Well, you can do this if you're trading decks, if you're swapping decks, if you want to keep tabs on how your friends are doing, or if you meet someone at a tournament with an interesting deck, you can register their deck and see how well they do. But obviously, to use the deck in a tournament, you need its QR code and its identity card in order to get it registered and earn points and chains and rankings and so on. But it looks like all the achievements are tied to the deck. So you can loan your deck to a friend who can take it to a tournament and it will still have the same rankings and chains as if you were playing it. Right, let's register another deck. So we're going to type in the details of our lovely Regal Commander Eagle. Do you remember him? Let's click on Add Deck, and we get a slightly different pop-up. Because we were the first person to register this deck, you can see we've acquired one Amber Shard. And if we go down to our decks, you can see that both of our decks are listed here, and they're sorted by name, because that's the only way you can sort things at the moment. If we make Adamant Care a favourite, and then click Show Favourites, that's what we were talking about when we were saying you could streamline your list. And if we go to our treasure, we can see that we've earned one amber shard. One third of a piece of amber. And we only need 17 more to forge a key. And see, there's a little pop-up about how to earn ember and what you can do with it. Points do indeed make prizes. And you can see our overall total at the bottom has gone up by one as well.